Hello! Hello everybody! My name is Lara from Theatre of Science. I uh, usually in the past have taught physics to people who are age 11 to age 18. Physics, small subject, just how the whole world universe works. Let's do some! Let's learn about forces. Very important in physics. One of the most important bits, which is why we're starting with it. When you're aged like 6, 7, 8, even when you get to GCSE, um, and even at A level actually, you will hear that a force is a push or a pull. Sometimes people call it a twist. Say a twist is an extra one, but if you do a twisting action with your hands, what are you doing? Really, you're just like pulling with one hand and pushing with another hand. So a force is a push or a pull, and a force changes how things move. So get your ball and get a surface. I've got a bit of turf that my children nicked from a garden centre last year. But you could just have a carpet or a table. Give the ball a push, right? What happens? Do it again. So what you've done is we say in physics that you have applied a force to the ball. It was still, and then you applied a pushing force, and the ball moved. So your force changed the motion of the ball. First question, why does the ball stop? Serious question. Okay, I started learning physics quite late in life, and before I was about 28 I would have just said, it just stops. No, some people it is actually their jobs to think about this stuff. Why does the ball stop? If you're with someone, turn to the person with you and say out loud why you think the ball stops. If you're on your own, just say it out loud to me. Saying it out loud will help you. Um, you can hear whether you think your answer is good, okay? And then put it in the comments. I think I've got about a 10 second delay in the comments and I need to give you 10 seconds thinking time. So I'm gonna eat about a quarter of this pear so that I'm forced to stay silent while you think. Why does a ball stop? Yesterday I did this, eating an apple, just talked all the way through still, but with my mouth full, which was disgusting. Just staying silent today. Have you got an idea? Have I got any comments? I'm scrolling, scrolling. Oh, hello, Alicia says friction. Oh, Sam says friction of the grass. Oscar says resistance because of the grass. Oh, wow. Well, these are good words, but what is resistance? What is friction then? Someone help Marianne, she can't hear anything. Oh, Sadia, thank you. It's gravity. Yes, some people were saying this yesterday. So gravity is pulling the ball towards the earth. In, so gravity is pushing, is pulling the ball down to earth in this direction, right? Would something pulling on the ball from this direction, would it change the movement if it was going in this direction? I don't know. Vivian's just shouting, friction! Friction of the glass. All right, a lot of people are saying friction. What is friction? Uh, Dylan, friction slows it down, but what makes it stop? Is it the air? Oh, very good. Okay, so a lot of people saying friction today. Ah, thank you, Lucy and Devon. This is what I was expecting you to say. Lucy and Devon says because the force has run out. Now that, Lucy, is thinking in the same way that I think Aristotle thought a long time ago. That, that makes sense to me. So you push, the ball starts to move, you push, you take your push away, and eventually the ball stops. Yeah, th this is what I was thinking that you would think. A lot of people are talking about friction. So what is friction? Well, good way to think about it is, I'm using this turf, yeah? So I push and it stops. Um, can you think of a different surface that you could use that would make the ball go further? So if you've rolled it on the carpet, if you rolled it on the floor, it would go a bit further, wouldn't it? If you rolled it on some ice, it would go for miles and miles and miles. You know this because you do skids on awesome wooden floors in your socks. No one does a skid on a carpet. Why would you even try? It'd be ridiculous. Um, so that suggests to us that um, actually the movement of the ball after you've pushed it isn't anything to do with the push. Because you take your hand away, whether this is carpet or wood or ice, the ball behaves in a different way. What is happening is the carpet or the wood or whatever it is, is pushing back against the ball. So I said that forces change the movement of things. If you read my little riddle, what does showing a packet of sweets to my children have in common with a force? Well, if my children are sitting around like, oh no, we don't want to go, and I show them a bag of sweets, like, oh, I was going to give you these in the car. They're like, get up, run to the car, sit in their seats. Um, but if my kids are all like running around like, oh, and I show them a packet of sweets, like, snack time, they're like, and they stop. 
Same with forces, right? Forces do make things move, but what they really do is change the movement of things. So if something's still and you push it, it stops. But if something's moving and you apply a force, uh, then it stops. So if something, if this ball is moving, the force of um, the carpet or the rug or whatever pushing back on the ball is what made it stop. And that force is called friction. Friction is a force that occurs when things rub against each other. We are going to talk more about friction in a minute. But first I'm going to give you a little sheet to do to get you thinking about the forces around us. What is a push? What is a pull? Right, you'll have to excuse me now because I am... Um, I'm crawling over, I don't know why I put the camera on me. I'm crawling over the table, onto my chair. There we go. Ah, oh, look, it's like I planned this. Here we go. So some of you will have printed this out. If you haven't, it's all on the board. I'm sorry, it's a little bit small, isn't it? So some of you are going to be like five and some of you are about 12. So I don't expect you all to do all of this, but in each case, please, can you tell me, is the force causing each change of movement a push or a pull? And then, if, uh, if you don't mind making mistakes, you're willing to have a go, what is actually causing the force? So in this example, um, a ball is stopping rolling across a carpet, so it's a pushing force that stopped it, and exactly what's caused the force is the carpet pushing against the ball. Friction always goes in the opposite direction to the way the thing is moving. Okay, so have a go at these, and then we'll go through it. <laughs> Linny just says, Wee! Good feedback, Linny, thank you. Brooke, exactly. Smooth floor with polish on is very slippy. Yeah, so you would say, Brooke, that a smooth floor with polish on it um, does not have very much friction, whereas a carpet has lots of friction. Hello, Alice and Ollie. Oh, Yusuf. Hello, Yusuf. I will try and remember that. Right, I'll do the first one because I learned something amazing. Uh, physics teacher by trading, don't teach biology to a very high level. Learned something really weird about muscles when I was doing this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Jay Catherine um, has got this first one. Oh, hi Anne, didn't see you there. Yeah, muscles it turns out, they can't push. They can only pull. Who knew? So, I'm gonna say, you could, you could put muscles if you wanted a really posh word, you could say uh, contracting. So yeah, what happens when any bit of your body moves really is that, say you're well, getting in the way, if your muscle is this long, like you've, your muscle in this arm, it pulls inwards, it contracts, and that makes your bones move. So yeah, muscles don't shout. Finn age 11, can you have a shout out, Finn? No, what an outrageous request. But yeah. That helps you for the other questions, some of the other questions to remember that muscles can't push, they can only pull. That's right, Nadia. Ah, okay, Antonia says that Two is gravity, yeah, so, but it, does gravity pull or push then? Ruhi says, a push? Is gravity a pull or a push? I will give you 30 more seconds and then I'll go through it, okay? Hi, Keen H7. I'll give you 30 seconds. Don't worry if you don't get finished. It's really just brain exercise, this. So she says, number two is a push. A lot of people saying that gravity pushes things towards the ground. So where's, right. so where's gravity? So like if you're stood on the earth then, 
or you're in an aeroplane really high above the earth, where is gravity strongest? Is it on like right on the earth or is it up in the aeroplane? People saying the apple is being pushed. So there's something above the apple is that pushing down on it. Lindsay says gravity pulls things towards the centre of the earth. You don't get number seven. All right, we'll go through it in 10 seconds. Oh, you don't get the hint. Oh, so I'm saying, like, imagine air, just because if you don't know about air pressure, imagine air is just like lots of tiny little balls, like kind of moving around. Imagine like a ball pool that's risen into the air and it's just like whizzing around, that's air. Number two is a pull. Yeah, right, let's, let's go through them then. Don't worry if you didn't get finished. You can always watch it back uh, if you think I'm going too fast. Um, yeah, gravity. I mean, actually, if you've seen my gravity lesson, you know gravity is incredibly complicated and most physicists would really say that it isn't a push or a pull. Um, but yeah, generally, when we talk about gravity, in how Newton thought of it, we think of it as pulling things down to the ground, all right? So if you're standing on the ground, um, you've got kind of the most gravity that you can have on Earth, whereas on Mount Everest, there's a little bit less gravity. On an aeroplane, there's a bit less gravity. And obviously, the further and further away you get from Earth, like in space, very, very little gravity. So you can kind of imagine it like that, like gravity is strongest sort of at the centre of the Earth. So that's where they're like, it's incorrect, but like the particles of Earth are the, are the source of the gravity. Yeah, so it's the Earth itself that is causing the pull. So yeah, you could, we'll say gravity, yeah. Uh, a bike braking, so a bike is a wheel spinning really fast and then to brake the bike, um, brake pads push down on either side of the wheel. So a uh, brake pads are pushing against something which is sliding, so it's basically sort of things sliding across each other. So the brake pads push down on the bike and uh, it's friction again, did anyone get that? Friction, a force that happens when things sort of slide or move against each other. You stopping because you walked into a lamppost, um, it is a push, we'll talk more about this next week, but yeah. Sounds weird, but when you walk into a lamppost, you push into the lamppost and the lamppost pushes back on you, which is why you stop. So, uh, say like particles in lamppost. Puffer fish going from puffed to unpuffed. Well, that's a bit of a weird one, that, isn't it? Because the puffer fish pulls the water. Oh, Alice, come on. That's the kind of thinking we want. Alice says that the braking one is a pull because you pull on the brake of a bike. Yeah, very good point. So you put you pull on the brake of the bike, which causes the brake pads to push down. Mm, I'm going to go with like the source. So the bike actually, I think if this was a GCC question, the bike actually stopping is because of the brake pads, if you see what I mean. You do have to pull on the bike, but you don't have to, do you? Like if you wanted to, you could get down next to the bike and push the brake pads. So I'm going to say push, but yeah, thank you. Very good thinking there. Yeah, a puffer fish, same thing, I suppose. It like pulls water into itself, but how it stays puffed <laughs> is that all the water particles inside it are like whizzing around and bouncing about on the sides of its body. So they're pushing against its body, which keep it. So I guess yesterday I said both. I think I'm going to say, oh, but I've put moving from unpuffed to puffed, haven't I? So maybe it's a pull. I don't know. Both. Water pressure, I'm going to say. The pressure of the water particles pushing against the body. Um, a frog's fart rising through a pond. Trick question. I learned less of it yesterday. Scientists don't even know frogs can fart. They probably can't. Their bottoms are very, very weak. So there you go. But anyway, if you had a bubble uh, floating through some water, it would be going up. And that would be because of the force of the water pushing it up. So like the water underneath it pushes the bottom. We'll do density later. Uh, uh, water pressure again, I'm going to say. I don't know why I'm bothering to write, this isn't helping anybody, is it? A hot air balloon taking off. Um, well, it's taking off, so it was still, and then it starts to rise up. Just scrolling to some comments, sorry. Uh, Emma just says, question six. Lol. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Um, hot air balloon taking off, so it was still, and then it starts to rise up. So there is, um, again, I'm using gravity incorrectly, but we'll say that gravity is like pulling the balloon in this direction, but it's moving in this direction, so there's a bigger force pushing it up, and that is the force of the warm air particles inside it. So when you heat up air particles, you can picture them as being little balls. They get really excited, they spread out, and they push on the balloon, and that's what makes the balloon go up. So it's a push, and it's air. I like to say air pressure this time. A poo coming out of a kitten. Aha, well, the, uh, the intestines of the kitten, you talk about 
you talk about pushing out poos, don't you? But actually the intestines of the kitten are a muscle and muscles can only pull. So it's actually the muscles pulling inwards, contracting, uh, which makes the poo come out. But I guess something contract, I guess like if you put your ball, put your ball, put your hand like that, make a circle with your hand and put your ball on top of it and pull your muscles so that your muscles move inwards. I guess you are pushing the ball, aren't you? So a pull can create a push. I'm never going to look at that ball the same way again. So um, yeah, I'm going to say push. But it is a contraction that causes it, a muscle contraction. And coat coming out of can because your friend shook it and didn't tell you. It's pretty much the same as a frog fart. Um, it's being pushed. So there's bubbles of gas inside the can which are rising up to the surface because they're, we'll talk about density later, but they're less dense, so they're coming out and they're pushing the coke with it. So, yeah, I guess air pressure again. Okay, right, let's talk a little bit more about friction. You got any jam? Hey, Paul, Isabel. Yeah, Isabel, maybe so. Yeah, you can argue with me about that if you like. Arguing is good, it means, it means our brains are working. Okay, just climbing over the table, so smooth. <clears throat> there we go. Right, have I flipped the screen? Have I flipped the screen? No. <laughs> Let's do that. Charlotte, science is cool. Yeah, thanks to science, um, I have this iPhone which can flip screens. So I can write on the board and you can see. This is making these second lockdown lessons a lot easier. Right, yeah, so let's talk about friction. So we've said, rub your hands together. It will feel quite warm because friction does that. The force of things pushing against things that are moving, sliding across each other, it generates heat. So sometimes friction um, is very good. Like you can walk around your house, can't you? Because the carpets have quite a lot of friction. If everywhere was ice, it'd be very awkward. Um, but sometimes friction is bad, like machinery, bits grinding together, um, generates heat, which is a waste of energy, can damage things. So that's why you, you oil things so that things uh, run over each other more smoothly. So there's less friction. Um, but yeah, friction can also happen in gases, like the air around you, and in liquids. Get a jar of uh, honey or jam for me, and a teaspoon. Uh, so get your teaspoon, and just tap your jar of, uh, ugh, hairy spoon, gross, get a new spoon. It's all right, there's only 640 people here. Tap your honey, okay, with your spoon, like this. You're feeling quite a lot of resistance, aren't you? The, the honey is really pushing back on your spoon. Uh, if you've got a glass of water of you, with you, you can do the same thing. Tap your, your water with the spoon. Far less resistance. The water is putting up far, there's far less friction, isn't there? This is like the shiny floor. The spoon goes through it very easily. So the water particles are not pushing back as much as with the honey or the jam or whatever you've got. Right, now, I've been doing that. Can you now put the spoon into your honey or your jam or whatever in such a way that it goes in more easily? Hmm? Do it. Get a spoon, get a jar of jam, put the spoon in in such a way that it, it goes into the honey more easily. You've already done it, haven't you? Yeah, you just, you, you went like this, didn't you? And it was much easier. Why was that much easier? Well, because uh, that's your, you've made the spoon more streamlined. So we do this with aeroplanes, don't we? Imagine if aeroplane noses looked like that. So imagine all these particles of air, these little, little balls in the air. Um, if aeroplane noses looked like this, then that would be a very big surface for the air particles to, to bash into. There'd be a lot of, say, friction, or I could say resistance um, from the air. So there'd be a big pushing force this way, and you'd need a big thrust from the engine. Um, a big force from the aeroplane to get through the air. So what we do is poke it, <laughs> poke it from the side, says Nadia, thanks Nadia. Um, what we do is we make our aeroplane noses look like this. And then, um, yeah, we say that it's streamlined, so I won't confuse you. So there's far less of a pushing force, so you don't need as much thrust from the engine and the airplane can go forward. Okay, now, have a look at these arrows for me, all right? Just need to tell you how to draw forces. Now key stage two, so below 11, they say the bigger the arrow, the bigger the force. But at key stage three, so 11 and up, they say the longer the arrow, the longer the force. People who are under 11, can you cope with this? 
it's the longer the arrow, the bigger the force. Long arrow, big force of air resistance here, air friction if you like. Small arrow, smaller force. Okay, now, uh, yeah, I'll just I'll very briefly tell you about force diagrams and then we'll look at what Newton said about forces. Okay, so when you're drawing the Drawing a, so this is a ball, okay? When you're drawing the forces on something, you draw arrows to show, show the forces. But it's slightly confusing. You would think if you wanted to show like that gravity was um, pulling the ball down to earth, you would think that maybe you would do that. Or that if you were pushing the ball this way, that you would draw it like that. But you don't. We, you sort of have to picture that you are the ball. Think about like what the ball is feeling. So if you're pushing the ball like this, the arrow that you would draw to show the force is like that. And if gravity is pulling the ball down, like your other ball, which way are you going because of gravity, you go this way. So we'd say lesson three, we'll find out that this way I'm right and gravity isn't quite right. But we'll say like gravity is pulling the ball down and like that's the, that's the push of your hand, okay? Um, and then very weirdly, if you imagine this ball is on the floor, we talked about this a bit with the lamppost, um, the, if a ball is resting on the floor, then gravity is pulling the ball down, but the force of the floor, the floor is actually pushing back on the ball. Um, like, we call it a reaction force. Don't worry about that. That's advanced stuff, but um, we'll, we'll get to that lesson two next week. Yeah, now, get your ball again, all right? Get your little ball. So we've talked about how forces change the behaviour of things. Get your ball now. Get your two hands. Can you push on the ball in such a way with your two hands that the ball doesn't move? Can you push on the ball with both your hands in a way that the ball doesn't move? Thanks, Bush, for science does rock. I don't know why I'm saying thank you like I made up science. Science does rock, yeah. Can you do that? Hi, Isaiah, in year five. Are you doing it? I'm, sure I'm struggling for a I don't know how I'm going to... Shit, right, we'll just have to... <laughs> you have to imagine that I'm using two hands. Are you pushing on it from both sides, like this? Yeah? If you push on it from both sides with equal force, it doesn't move, does it? If you increase the force on this side, push a bit harder, it goes that way. If you increase the force on that side, it goes a bit that way. But if you push with an equal force, it doesn't move. This is really the final thing that I have to teach you. And you learn it even under age 11. They have got this at the key stage three. It feels weird and confusing. Forces that are balanced don't change the movement of objects. So if a ball is sitting still and you apply a balanced force, it stays still. Now the weird bit is that if something is moving at a constant speed, like just trundling along, like one mile per hour, um, if there's no forces acting on it, then it just keeps going forever. And you, you sort of might know this if you think about the friction thing, like a ball rolling along a carpet will stop quickly because there's a big force of friction pushing back on it. A ball rolling along ice will go a lot longer because the ice hasn't got as much friction. In like deep, deep space, where there is hardly any uh, gravity or there's hard, no, hardly any particles, there's nothing to push back on the ball. So in a, in a perfect vacuum in space where there were no particles, um, a ball that was rolling because like maybe you'd pushed it, would just carry on rolling because there wouldn't be any friction to push back on it. So this is Newton's first law, which I'm going to read. Something stays at rest or its movement stays the same unless it is acted on by an unbalanced force. If there are unbalanced forces acting on something, like if you were in space and you kept pushing it, and you, if there are unbalanced forces acting on something, then its movement changes. And if the forces on something are balanced, then its movement doesn't change. So if you picture our very confusing ball in space, here's a ball in space, You've, you're, when you're pushing it, the forces on it are unbalanced, so maybe you're still, and then it starts to move, but as soon as you take your hand away, you're, the push is gone. There's no pushing force anymore. But the ball's still moving, because there's no friction. Do you get it? So, like, when I'm pushing, that would be the force diagram. It's an unbalanced force, the ball is moving in that direction. And as soon as my hand moves away, there's no forces acting on the ball, so it just carries on doing what it was doing, which is going forwards. Is that okay? How you would draw a force diagram, by the way, on a ball that was just sitting still on a table 
would be gravity's pulling it down, uh, the table's pushing back up, and there's no forces on either side. So you can see that this is balanced. So if you know that this ball is still on the table, you can look at the forces and think, oh yeah, it's staying still. Right! Um, oh yeah, I'll just tell you that forces are measured in newtons, and then I'll give you some questions. Because Newton did so much work on them. Good lad. <laughs> forces measured in newtons, but we'll do some numbers next week. For now, I just want to uh, give you some questions about whether some things are balanced or... Unba oh man, now it's as awkward as it was before, but there's a pot of honey in the way. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Here we go. So, can you tell me please whether the forces acting on these things are balanced or unbalanced? So, for example, I've put here this ball is starting to fall off a cliff. Now it's starting to fall off a cliff. So it was still and it's just started moving. So its movement is changing. So I'm going to say that the forces on it are unbalanced. And the forces on it unbalanced, you can see here because um, this arrow is much longer. So the we'll call it the force of gravity for now, is pulling the ball down. And there is some air resistance, but air resistance isn't as strong. So gravity is winning, if you like, and the ball is falling towards the ground. Right, have a go at those. It was Newton's employees that made the discovery, says Catherine. Catherine, writing that down. Really? I didn't even know Newton had employees. Not thinking about Edison. He like never discovered anything, did he? Oh, people raving about my smell, huh? How long is this? Uh, Joel, you've got 10 more minutes. I'll do number one for you so you know you're on the right track. Cat sitting on a mat. Quite exactly. It's balanced. Because uh, its motion, its movement is not changing. So there is a force pushing the cat, pushing up on the cat from the floor. And Again, gravity, not strictly speaking of force, but we're going to say for now that gravity is pulling the cat towards the floor. There you go. I'll do the second one as well, actually, for you, because then you'll know where you're going. Pushing a trolley along at three miles per hour. If, you're, if it's going at three miles per hour and its speed isn't changing, its movement isn't changing, then the forces on it are balanced. Friction is pushing against you. But if you're going at a steady three miles per hour, you must be pushing back with an equal force. So neither of you are winning, if you like. I'm just going to say that that was a push. There you go. I'll give you a couple more uh, seconds. So this swing, right, is not swinging. You're just sitting on the swing. Sitting still on a swing, well, you're not, your movement isn't changing, so it, the forces are balanced. This is a weird one, isn't it? So hopefully you've got now that uh, gravity is acting on all things on Earth. So it's gravity pulling down. But what is stopping you from falling onto the floor? It's the this rope which is pulling back up on you. If you if you hold a rope of a swing while someone's sitting on it and giving a wiggle, you'll feel that it's very tense. That tension is the string pulling up on you as you push down on it. So there you go. Um, at the top of a swing, about to fall. Whole different situation. Do you like my photoshopping here? Um, so you've someone's pushed you and you've got all the way to the top, but there's no push force acting on you now. You're just about to fall. So the only force acting on you is, we'll say it's just gravity that is about to pull you down the earth. That's why you swing back down. Um, balloon starting to take off. Okay, so the forces on it are unbalanced because its movement is changing. It was still and now it's going to move up. Oh, sorry. So the swing is unbalanced. Um, and you draw the arrows. Well, if it's unbalanced forces, one arrow must be bigger and it's going up. So the, the um, up thrust, let's call it air pushing up. The up thrust of all the air pushing up on the balloon is winning. It's stronger than the gravity which is pulling the balloon down and an aeroplane is speeding up as it goes forwards so the thrust of the engine is bigger than whatever's pushing against the aeroplane and the thing pushing against the aeroplane is air resistance I'm just going to do that so the forces on the aeroplane are unbalanced because its movement is changing it's speeding up and like we say gravity is still pulling down on it 
and something's pushing up on it, um, it's upthrust. But the forces this side, please notice, are balanced, because if they weren't, then it would either be going up if the air pushing on it was winning, or it would be going down because gravity would be pulling it down. Neither situations that you, that you want, really, halfway through a journey. So that's that. There you go. Right. Um, I'll give you... I'll just, just give you some GCSE questions, guys, and then we'll finish. Can I go through number six? Um, oh, yeah. Hopefully I've just gone through it for you there. Yeah, let's do a couple of GCSE questions to see how you get on now, okay? And then uh, and then we'll, we'll end and I'll just maybe have a little chat here. Right, look at this. This is a genuine GCSE question for when you were 16. Guys, most of you are not 16. I'm not expecting you to get this, but it'll be interesting for you to see um, like what level you get to. So the diagram shows an aircraft and the horizontal forces acting on it as it moves along a runway. The forces on the aircraft are balanced. Describe the movement of the aircraft when the forces on it are balanced for one mark. You only got one wrong. Ollie, Ollie, that's very good. If you'd got them all right, maybe this would be too easy for you and I'd be wasting your time. So if you got one wrong, that's good. That means you've learned something. Describe the movement of the aircraft when the forces on it are balanced. What you had to spot is that it's moving. The aircraft is moving along the runway. Ah, so many GCSE people did not get that. They were like, well, it's just, it's on a runway, so it must be still. So the plane must be still. No, it's moving, but the forces on it are balanced. So it's going at a constant speed. Did you get that? It's almost like they're just trying to trick you with these questions, isn't it? Well done. Yeah, aircraft movement at the same speed. All right, one more GCSE question for you. Again, just out of interest, really. The diagram shows a skydiver in free fall. Two forces, X and Y, act on the skydiver. Well done, uh, Koshi. Complete the sentence here by crossing out the two lines in each box that are wrong. So here's a skydiver falling. There's two forces acting on him, okay? Oh, or her. Um, y is pulling them down and X is pushing them up. Oh, Getty's saying it's balanced so it will change movement slowly. No, if the force is on something are balanced, this movement doesn't change at all. Charlotte, you just got your GCSE, well done. So, they're trying, again, they're just trying to sort of confuse you, aren't they? Because force diagrams are drawn in quite a strange way. Force X, first of all, which one are we looking for? We're looking for X, so we're looking for this one. So this force, arrow is not very clear, but this force is acting in this direction. Which force is it that acts on this, in this direction? What is the push or pull acting on an object that can cause it to accelerate called? Oh yeah, so when we say change movement, um, Yusuf, we are saying, when we say changing movement, we mean acceleration. So if something's speeding up or slowing down, then it's accelerating. So an unbalanced force causes an acceleration. Emma says X is friction and Y is weight. Beautiful. Yeah. Y is gravity and X is friction. Brilliant. <laughs> Helen, harsh. Um, exactly. So Y is, I mean, to be really correct, you would say weight again. We'll learn that lesson three. But you're right. Gravity is pulling down on the skydive in this direction and it is um, friction that is pushing up. Yeah, well done. So there you go, GCSE uh, physics is it's sort of trying to trick you to test how much you know, but it's really, it's not rocket science. Well, it is rocket science, but rocket science isn't as hard as people think. Right, folks. This table, there's no way this table's going to last, is there? Until, uh, until we get to the end of lockdown. Round two. Right. <clears throat> uh, that is the end of... Our first forces lesson. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I love Pokemon. What does that have in common science? Very good point. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. We will be here every week doing um, follow-up lessons on this. Um, half past one on Tuesdays and then this one at 11 on Wednesdays. It's just the same show live. Um, if you enjoyed that and you want to support me, 
the best thing you could do, brings me a tragic amount of pleasure, is you could go to my Facebook homepage and you could like my Facebook page. Oh man, I just love getting Facebook likes. It's awful, isn't it? It's like a computer game. It's like addictive. You want to like my Facebook page, that would be great. Um, but people are saying like, oh, thank you, you're so kind doing this for free. I was kind. I, I just started doing it in the first lockdown to be kind, but actually, at the end of lockdown, lots of lovely people um, started supporting me monetarily to carry it on, which is the whole reason this home ed show exists actually, and was like all ready to go, because we were doing it anyway. So they are called my patrons, if you go to my Facebook homepage, I'm talking to grown-ups by the way, kids, don't you do this, but if you go to my Facebook homepage and you click on sign up, you get to my Patreon page where you can support me, if you wish, with three or five or ten pounds a month. And you get various uh, thank yous from me in exchange for doing that. Like I send a bi-monthly magazine out to people who support five pounds. Anyone who supports with anything gets these rainbow glasses that I found that are super cool. And I explained to you how those work. Um, but yeah, there's no obligation. Um, the whole point is that because they're doing that, people who aren't in a position to pay just get physics for free it's like an insane business model but it seems to be working so woo! all my previous lockdown lessons are on my youtube channel if you want to go there and have a look at how trains work oh yeah so that's what i was really doing during lockdown with these shows which were a bit more a bit lighter and a bit more just you doing experiments and watching while i do stuff there's no questions for you really so saturday and sunday at 10 a.m is when i do my shows now so this week if you go to my event section you find an invite for the ice show where we're going to do like all the ice experiments and learn all about ice and how crazy it is and then i've said that every day at half past one except tuesdays because i do my home ed lesson I'm just going to come online and chat so in my events page again there's some stuff going on there every day at half one monday it's rainbows and then i think wednesday it's air you just bring some stuff and we'll just play with it and do some activities and talk about what's going on um oh thank you tom and canterbury it's very kind of you so yeah thank you so much for coming i think that's it i think that's all my adverts done i'm just gonna chat to you now that's all right